Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. So glad to be here with you again on a Mindset and Motivation Monday, one of my favorite shows of the week. And today I'm giving you a modern day twist on an ancient Ayurvedic based wisdom. Now, the interesting thing about Ayurvedic medicine is that it was written down 6,000 plus years ago. We know it's much older than that, but at least recorded history, we have some scraps of, uh, not even papyrus, but actually literally on, on bark of tree and different things like that, these beautiful scrolls or these tablets that were written and put together. And that was the basis for the beginning of Ayurvedic medicine. But in that, we, again, we still have trouble to this day understanding how they knew so much about the world. And not just in the world that we think about in terms of maybe physical health, using specific herbs, or uh, whether it be a, a, an old school de-stress protocol, right? The diet, the exercise, or the movement back then, stress reduction, et cetera. But they knew, you know, regardless, how do they know uh, thousands upon thousands of plant-based species, how they matched up? to whether it be uh, rheumatica, whether it be cold, flu-like symptoms, <clears throat> it could be uh, wasp stings, like you name it, they knew. And, and again, that's still, I think that that's still to be determined how they knew, but nonetheless, they did know. But Ayurvedic medicine, you know, the medicine part of it is one branch of Ayurveda. And so we have to understand is that there's eight full branches of Ayurvedic medicine. Believe it or not, they were doing surgery back then, thousands upon years ago. But there's another one, and it's one of my favorites, and that's psychology. And so when I've studied Ayurvedic medicine, I studied the psychology of Ayurvedic medicine as well. I've studied the yoga of, Ayur of, Med of Ayurveda. I've studied all the different forms of it. But of course, in my practice, I, I gravitate more towards the health side of it, but also the psychology, because the more that I practice, the more I understand that it is the mind, so the psychology, which often influences our physiology. So believe it or not, and I know that it's not necessarily new for some people, but it is for the majority of the world, that we can make ourselves sick. And, and that's not just like in getting a cold, but we can literally give ourselves dis ease in the body. And I've gone through that on many health shows about how producing certain thoughts and feelings, uh, let's say outside of the body, although we know it's part of the nervous system, but let's say the brain conjures it up and it creates an image and it leads to a feeling which then innervates the nervous system, which then can do what? Well, it can lower the immune system, it can produce more stress hormones, less sex hormones, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not gonna go through that here today, but again, in Ayurvedic medicine, they go through that quite in depth. What you may not know is that certain people are more prone to certain feelings. And when I've done Total Wellness Tuesday episodes on the psychology of individuals, we know that a good 50% of our happiness or unhappiness is just a trend. It doesn't mean that you're genetically based to be unhappy. It's just some people produce more happy thoughts, neurotransmitters, et cetera, than others. It goes to gut bacteria. It's the hormones that we produce, et cetera. But it also means that 50% is also in our control. And nobody's at a zero on either standpoint. So some people, yeah, they may be incredibly happy to a more natural level. Some people need to work at it a little bit more, but everybody can be happy. But when you look at the predispositions of each dosha, that just means there's three main types of individuals. Uh, in Ayurveda, they said this. Uh, we can look at that. We can actually correlate it with modern times. Now, Essentially, I don't know if they were studying Ayurvedic medicine or not, but about 50 years ago, maybe a little bit more now, in modern medicine, they created something called the somatotypes. And the somatotypes were more psychological-based doshas, but they matched up, of course, perfectly with Ayurveda. You had the vata, which we call the ectomorph. You had the mesomorph or the uh, pitta, which modern day calls the mesomorph. And then we had the kapha in Ayurveda, which is now the modern day endomorph. If you're interested in more learning more about Ayurveda, I will link up all the Ayurvedic shows at stephencabral.com forward slash 2565, as well as a really nice TED talk on these modern day energy systems of the body or, or energetic-based personalities. What I want to do right now, though, is just give you those energetic-based personalities and see which one you fit into, all right? So it was kind of fun uh, while I was listening to the presentation that someone sent me. I, of course, played along. And it was immediate, like right away I knew which one I was. I want to see if you knew or you know which one is right for you. So again, there's no right or wrong. As you'll see, um, there are good sides and negative sides to each 
energy that we exhibit the most of. And it doesn't mean that we can't incorporate all of them. I think that we do. It's just we tend towards one. So in the comments below, let me know which of the four you are. And then I'll give you the correlations with Ayurveda. All right. So the very first one is fiery red. All right. I'm going to link up this talk that was given, and I will also give credit to whoever gave the cut, Scott uh, Schweller, I believe was the last name. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link that up just to make sure I give credit uh, to these slides. So uh, fiery red is the first one. We're kind of looking at the right-hand upper quadrant. This person is competitive. They're demanding. They're determined. They're strong-willed. They're purposeful. It's like, go, go, go all the time. What's the next thing? All right, got it, and moving on, right? So it's like, it's, it's going, it's competitive. Uh, you want to win all the time, all those different types of things, right? All right, so the yellow, and I'll share what mine is in just a moment. You want to listen to all four first. Uh, the yellow, sunshine yellow, is sociable, dynamic, uh, demonstrative, enthusiastic, and persuasive. All right, so sociable, dynamic, demonstrative, enthusiastic, persuasive, all right? So someone that enjoys uh, going out, meeting with other people, having conversations, getting people together, setting up dinners, like all of those things, all right? Uh, they love being on social media. They love chatting with people. And then the next one is Earth Green. We're moving around the quadrant, all right? And we'll pop this up on the screen. So if you're watching this on YouTube, we appreciate you. Uh, we'd love you to subscribe to the channel every day, bringing you brand new shows. All right, next up, Earth Green, caring, encouraging, sharing, patient, and relaxed. Those of you who studied Ayurvedic medicine, right away you should know which dosha this is. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But you're caring, you encourage others, you share with others, you're patient, you hold space for them, uh, and you're relaxed, you're easygoing. And the last one is Cool Blue. We're moving up to that now top left quadrant. So Cool Blue, people are cautious, they're more reserved, more formal, more precise, more deliberate, and more questioning in their actions, all right? So again, no one is better than another at all, uh, but that's the first set. So fiery red, that's going to be more, and I have more to go into as well with this, but that's more of the pitta, all right? So if you're thinking about what's the pitta, well, you know, they're, they're uh, competitive, they're, they're fierce, they're go-getters, they're confident, they're leaders, take charge type of personalities. They're always on the go, right? Always, always creating, always making something happen. And then the blue, right? We just did the blue. That was the last one before this. Cautious, precise, deliberate, questioning, a little bit more formal, maybe a little bit more reserved, maybe sometimes a little bit more anxious. That right there is the vata, right? The vata, it also corresponds with um, you know, more of that uh, quieter, uh, anxious uh, body type. Then we have the caring, encouraging, sharing, patient, and relaxed dosha. And what is that? That is the kapha, right? So kapha is earth green, vata, cool blue, pitta, fiery red. And I want to, it matches up really well because, you know, if we look at these, um, the, the vata is what? It's, it's air and ether, right? You're kind of moving with the wind, you're a little unsteady, you're unsure, you're questioning. Uh, what is pitta? Well, fire, right? They are literally fiery. They're burning things up. You have to be careful. We'll get to that in the next slide, uh, is that you have, to be, you have to be careful that you literally don't burn others out either with all of your fire and competitiveness. And it's not meant in a bad way. Like, that's the thing. Pittas don't mean to be competitive in a bad way often. They're just... Um, they're looking to get to the, to the maximum, get the best out of everyone and themselves as well. And then earth green. All right, well, well what, is, uh, an, what is the kapha body type, right? What's the endomorph? It's characterized by earth and is characterized by water. And so it's very calm. It's very stationary. It's grounded. And that's that. Now, the yellow is interesting because in, in yellow, if we think about it, what is it? Sociable, dynamic, demonstrative, enthusiastic, persuasive. You know, that's a combination one. Sociable, all right, well, that's the kapha. Dynamic, that is more of the pitta. The enthusiastic, pitta, as well as maybe some of that kapha. And persuasive, that's more of the pitta. So it's still more on the pitta side. And that's why I'm going to share with you mine, and then I'm going to go into the negative. So I want you to choose yours and just, well, choose yours now. But how it moves is moving from pitta 
to more of a pitta kapha to then more and then kapha and then vata at the top. And again, you don't have to base this on your dosha because keep in mind that my personality is not my physical dosha, all right? My, my, my mentality and my personality in Ayurveda is the fiery red. Now, not everybody may guess that about me. They, they, they really may not. Some people, of course, if you know me well, you do know that that's a very strong side of me. But I, I try to keep it balanced because when I was very younger, that fiery red burnt me out. It was one of the reasons why I got so sick at, at, sick at 17. It wasn't just all of the antibiotics or it wasn't just the Epstein-Barr virus. It wasn't just the, all of those different things. It was also you know, trying to be an all-A student playing sports every single season in in high school, um, trying to go for varsity letter, trying to do national honor side, trying to do all these things like a pitta would typically try to do, and it was too much. My body, my, my everything was not built for that, and I broke down, and that's the truth, is that, uh, yes, it was all of the different conventional medicine, the adenoids taken out, the tonsils taken out, the allergies, the medications I was on, the, um, again, the 3,000 capsules of amoxicillin, right? All of those things are, are very, very detrimental to the human body. But my body did burn out. And over that time, though, I learned that you have, the way to heal is that I had to calm a bit of that. Now, I don't get rid of it because there can be a lot of benefits to that fiery red. It, meaning like um, getting things done, right? Or wanting to do my best for myself and for others, for my family. It's not just for me. It's, it's wanting to be, get the best out of life for everybody. It's why I do Mindset and Motivation Mondays. It's not just for me. I have a, I have a need to share this. I have a need for others to want, uh, hopefully, to inspire them to want to get better as well. So that's that fiery red. And, and I do have a bit, I would say, of, of just being more dynamic. I'm, I'm, um, I can be louder. I can talk loud. I can have a lot of energy. I can, you know, go up to people when I feel like, um, you know, I, I have something to share. I can do lunch and learns. I can do talks, whatever it might be. And I am enthusiastic, so there's no doubt about it. But, you know, in terms of like sociable and all that, yeah, I, I love um, doing a certain amount of socializing, but I'm not truly like a, a very extroverted person, right? So there's, there's kind of, um, there's a lot of talk about introvert, extrovert. I wouldn't say that I'm... Uh, dynamically either, right? But certainly, you know, if I'm choosing one or the other, uh, I'm in my uh, research lab, my cave, reading, writing, recording, and, and I'm doing that by myself. Now, do I love having a team? Of course I do. I love it. Um, but, you know, for me, if I could choose between one or the other, you know, uh, for the majority of the time, I want to do both. Right? That's why I love going into talks. I love giving talks. I love meeting people. But at the end of the day, you know, I love being, uh, I love having my quiet time as well. I love being able to be with my family and just, you know, some downtime too. So, you know, something it's interesting to think about. So what I want you to do is choose yours. Fiery red, sunshine yellow, earth green, or cool blue. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to see which one you are. Now, let's go into though a little bit deeper. So some of the negatives that people might think about it, like this is how. It, on your worst day, right, you're having a bad day, this is how people would uh, describe you. Uh, my team maybe as well, right? My family as well. All right, so fiery red, you're more aggressive, people might say to you. You're controlling, you're driving, you're overbearing, and you're intolerant. And I would say impatient. You know, impatient's not on that list, but it should be on that list as well. So on my worst day, it can absolutely be all of those. Like, um, Wanting, uh, controlling, not so much. I gave that up, I think, quite, quite a, a long time ago. I mean, I have, uh, you know, we probably have like 80 to 100 people on my teams for all the different um, companies that we have, health companies, and I let them do their job. I mean, I really do. I try, to, I try to help maximize their potential because they are better than me in, in many, many areas, and I want to see that maximized for them and for all of you in the community. So, you know, that part of it, driving, yes, I want to get things done. I want to, because I want to also then do the next thing. That's a very pitch thing, right? Like, hey, guys, we need to get this done. We need to make this happen because this comes next, and we can't get to this great stuff until we do this. So for sure, you know, that's a big part of it. And again, these are my like worst days for sure. And being impatient, I have to fight against impatience all the time. And it's never in a bad way. It's not like I'm like scolding people. It's not about that. It's impatient that like this life, uh, and I look at it very uniquely because again, I was sick for 10 years. 17 to 27 was taken from me, right? But now it's giving me so much more back because I, I'm, I'm, I have perspective, I have gratitude. But I also look at it as life is short, right? Like life is short. 
And so what I want to do is just make sure that we do all the things that matter to us so that we have no regrets. So that's fiery red, right? It's bad day. All right, so now sunshine yellow. What's a bad day for sunshine yellow that people might say about you? You're excitable, you're frantic, you're indiscreet, meaning like you say whatever's on your mind, flamboyant, or hasty, doing things too quickly, right? All right, that's sunshine yellow. And I, and I think that that's pretty good. And I think that that's, you know, great uh, for sure. And I certainly exhibit some of those myself. All right, earth green. What about that kapha? What are they saying about the kapha? All right, or the endomorph. They're docile. Like, you're too docile, too easygoing, too bland. Like, you know, be more interesting, right? Do more stuff. Uh, you're plotting. You think about things, right? You're kind of mulling them over. You're reliant. I don't see how that would be bad at all. Uh, and stubborn. And in Ayurveda, they say one thing about the kapha, though, is they can sometimes be jealous as well, all right? And again, these, so we have all the beauty of the endomorph and the kapha, and then we have some of the negatives as well. And there's beauty and there's negatives to all of these. All right, now the cool blue. They, sometimes people can call them stuffy, like, you know, a lot of people from Boston, Massachusetts could say, hey, those New Englanders or those Bostonians are stuffy, right? Well, maybe not. Maybe they're just kind of keeping to themselves because... They're from a different part of the world and they grew up in a different way, like not meant to be stuffy. It's just because you have a conversation with a Bostonian, they're usually uh, pretty good people. Meet one on a plane and have a conversation as long as they're, of course, not a pitch and they're like, I have to get this done within the next hour. Uh, fun conversations. They're um, cool blue, so the Vata can be indecisive because they're always worried about making the wrong decision, right? The Vata. Suspicious, they can be suspicious of others. They're again that wind, that ether. They're a little bit more like, is this the right, is this the right choice? Are they the right person? Is this a good person or are they a bad person? Am I gonna get hurt or not get hurt? Right? They can be cold, right? That's more like stuffy, like mm, this person doesn't look like they're smiling, right? Are they happy? I don't know. And they're more reserved. All right, so that's more of that vata, anxious, reserved, a little bit worried. And so uh, that again. Doesn't mean it happens all the time, but there's the good side and sometimes there's the bad side. I like this too. I just want to share just a couple more with you. The fiery red, and this is like in an elevator. What would the pitta do in an elevator? They would get into the elevator and they would immediately press the close door button. They've got to get to their next destination right away as fast as possible, right? They see someone coming there, they're clicking that closed door button. Now, I would hope I would not do that personally, uh, but certainly that's more of that pitta mindset. For yellow, they would see the elevator as a great opportunity to catch up and chat with people. They may hold the door open even to finish a conversation with someone they chatted with uh, while inside the elevator that they met them. All right, the green, more of that kapha, they use the open door button to actually help others get in. They might even pop their head out to look around to see if there's someone coming. All right, the blue, that vata, they calculate the combined weight of everyone already inside of the elevator in order to make sure that they haven't met the maximum pound restrictions. My oldest daughter is a lot like that, that's funny. So there you have it, that's the elevator-based test. And then we have the um, how you might best contribute, you know, to the world. And everybody has their own way of doing it. So kind of starting with that fiery red, and we'll kind of go around all the way through the yellow, the green, and then the blue. And this is the last one. It's getting it done. So basically, uh, the fiery red's like, we need to do it now. It needs to happen today, right? So it would be nice for my team to listen to this so they'll kind of understand, like, why, you know, why, why, is, why does it have to be today? Why can't it be tomorrow? Uh, and the, the next one, as we move to orange, is getting it started, all right? That's better. Getting it done now is better, but let's at least get it started. And then the yellow is, they're more sociable. Hey, let's do it together as a team, right? Let's hold a team meeting. Where the, t where the red's like, I don't want to do a team meeting. Let's just get it done, right? And then as we move to green, we're getting into agreement. All right, we're making a plan. And then we're also doing it the right way for everybody, the kind way. As we move to blue, we're going to do it carefully. All right, we're going to make sure it's done right, and we're going to make sure it's done correctly. So as we move through them, it's very interesting to see how that we work with others on a team. And I'm going to be doing an IHP podcast for our IHPs to try to figure out, like, who might you work best with? So on my team... I already knew, like I've known, because I've been working on my own um, since 2000. And so I've always known what like my skills are and what skills I don't have, or I, I could try to develop, but it's not naturally me. So whenever I opened up, um, I opened multiple locations for health and wellness and fitness and all that inside of Boston, and every single time I always hired a manager, always. And their job was to 
hire more team members and use the training protocols that I've created to train them and um, help with the front desk and answer emails and customer support because I knew that as a fiery red, uh, that was not going to be my strongest suit. So what you realize in life is that Yes, you like you should be patient, right? Like I should be patient, and, and I do try to be, of course. I try to very, very um, hard to do that at, at work and also with my daughters, with my family. And so, yes, you want to work on all those, things, all those things. You don't want to be the worst side of you, but at the same time, you want to realize that just naturally, people trend in one direction. Call it nature, call it nurture. I think it's a bit of both. I really do. I mean, we, my wife and I always say we raised our daughters really the same exact way. And I know, but there's a lot to birth order. I, I believe that there is. Not not always, but I see a lot of older born a little bit more fiery red. Um, maybe there's something to birth signs as well. I don't know. It's not my forte, but I'm an Aries, and so I'm oldest born. I'm also pet based mindset. And um, in Aries, and so it's like, well, I had no chance but to be, <laughs> but to be fiery red, right? So it's interesting to look at all this. I, I find it fascinating. They've been talking about this for six thousand plus years, and there's just different takes on it. But for sure, we kind of all enter this world uh, maybe a certain way, and then our, our nurture part of it moves us, I think, deeper in that direction, or maybe makes us a little bit more balanced. I'd love to hear your take on this. Uh, feel free to let me know below in the comments. I would love to hear from you. As always, thanks so much for tuning into the show. I appreciate you. Thank you. Have an amazing start to the week. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.